I have a great pleasure to have as a guest in our studio the chairman of the jury, Mr. Roberto Ragazzi. Welcome. So we know the results of the competition, so tell me, what do you think about the winning violin? So what kind of instrument it is, in your opinion? Yeah, it's very interesting because I have been a part of a competition uh, 20 years ago here, uh, also, uh, and uh, the, the things changed uh, in different ways, you know, first of all, because uh, we have the pandemic, yes, which was not there at the time. <laughs> And also because uh, the level of the workmanship and the te technical and acoustics uh, raised the, um, quite uh, much in 20 years. This is a remember the memory I, I have. So this year, um, it, it has been very interesting because it was very difficult to judge and to find uh, the, the top because the, the level was really high uh, in a certain way. I mean... Um, probably a part of those instruments, uh, the middle range is raised also, but to find the best, the top, has been a very consuming task for everybody of us. We have, of course, all the jury is coming from different traditions, and that's good because there is a diversity, and, but finally we found that it's it, very interesting. It was obvious for all of you that this violin, this person, should be a winner of the competition? Well, uh, we didn't have any discussion, uh, even uh, if we could think that some, something could be improved. Uh, uh, combining uh, the, the technical aspect uh, and uh, the acoustical aspect of these instruments, uh, uh, they, we j didn't have any discussion. They were really the best in, uh, for this. So if you, if you wanted to have a new violin, would you like to, to have this winning instrument? Well, I am a violin maker yes, too. Yes, of course, yes, <laughs> yes. But uh, let, let's, let's assume that but I think, yes, uh, the, you are a violinist. Yeah. I'm not a violinist. Uh, I just play here Theoretically a bit. speaking, yes. Yeah. Theoretically speaking. Yes. But um, yes, I think, um, you know, many years ago, there was a big gap between the old instruments and the modern ones. Today, this gap has been... Uh, very little in a, in a way, you know, because uh, this, of course, is in the, in, the, in the hands of players. If a player prefers uh, an old instrument, not only for the sound, but for, because for them is more comfortable to play, we don't have any objection. I mean, uh, the violin is, uh, is such an old uh, musical instrument uh, with 500 uh, years of history that uh, we have to accept that uh, an old instrument uh, in some ways, very often is preferred to a modern one. But I would say that in comparison to 20 years ago or 30 years ago, today a musician can choose a modern violin with no problem because there are a lot of uh, uh, nice features which are completely fulfilled. Mm -hmm. uh, and this instrument uh, reflects this for sure. And wha what are you looking for first and foremost in new instruments? In what I do? What are you looking for? As a, as a judge. As a judge? Yes. Well, uh, we have uh, many different uh, technical aspects uh, uh, that we have to consider. You know, a violin is not only an outline uh, and is not only a workmanship, uh, it's a matter of style. Uh, it's, the varnish has uh, a lot of history, so we have to match uh, what is uh, general agreement on these kind of things. Uh, um, but of course, uh, we are looking for, mm, we had to divide our judging uh, in different aspects of the violin. And uh, mm, part was varnish, part was uh, the outline, the purfling, everything, the technical aspects. And of course, uh, most important today is also the sound. Mm. I mean, uh, if an instrument uh, is good for a musician, uh, is, uh, this is uh, why it has been made for, for sound, you know. Mm -hmm. You have a very long experience uh, as, a, as a luthier. So um, what are you proud of the most? In my... As, uh, in, in your work, In yes. my work, yes. in my own experience. Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, you, you feel that uh, life uh, is... a. Uh, too short for a violin maker normally because there are so many aspects 
and I am happy of the of what I have reached in 50 years of activity. Um, but uh, what is interesting is that uh, it keeps you alive. I mean, it's not the final point. It can be another starting point. You know, it's uh, very interesting uh, to to keep uh, to be alive in with this work uh, because you have always something to learn and we learn a lot also from competitions of course because when is when we see that uh, many different people from many parts of the world uh, has uh, maybe some nice ideas or some different solutions normally there are very small things small small details but they in a violin play a big role I would so what's say. the main source of your inspiration as a luthier uh, my, in my own yes, making, uh, yes. well, the classical work uh, is important. You must know and you must uh, know the history of the instrument. Uh, but um, it's also nice uh, to be free. In There's a certain moment in which what you learned uh, should be applied uh, to yourself. You have to choose uh, what is good uh, for the time you are working on, because of course we are living in a century which is much different from the one uh, in which Stradivari or Guarneri were living. Uh, and um, it's interesting, well, I am, I can speak for myself, I, I am quite proud that uh, I could find uh, my own way. And it's recognized, uh, generally speaking, uh, that uh, is interesting. So means uh, that I, I didn't copy only or I only followed some strict rules. I can say, OK, this is my interpretation, and I leave it to the world, and the future will say. You've been collaborating with different uh, famous, outstanding violin violinists. Yeah. So uh, who? Uh, you are proud of, I mean about collaboration, so uh, which one was, was that well, your, your <laughs> favorite? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say that uh, all my clients or the people I came in contact with uh, are, uh, they, everybody gave me something. When I was in the beginning of my career, the first uh, I would say um, personality uh, of, uh, of that I approached that he approached me. We were uh, we knew each other. So it was Franco Gulli, uh, and at the time uh, the violin was uh, had still the smell of the past, uh, and uh, it was projected in the future. You know, nowadays we have internet, and many things are flattening a little bit. But uh, Franco Gulli was a very refined player and a very nice person, knowledgeable, a good teacher, and I have learned a lot. Uh, of course, because I also was in the beginning and I had uh, to follow what was the feedback of a player. But I was very surprised uh, in the beginning of the 80s that he was attracted by my instruments. I was really in the beginning and I I didn't know a lot of things, so, but he found, uh, I remember that he, he helped me to, to, to take a good uh, uh, self, uh, um, conscious, self, um, how is it? Self, self conscious, yeah. Yeah, Consciousness, uh, yeah. to be proud of what mm -hmm. I was doing because he, was, he found some, mm -hmm. some good uh, um, attitude on violin making mm -hmm. for me. And uh, he, uh, this helped very much. After him, of course, uh, a great time we had with Ruggero Ricci because uh, he was opened to the, vi the modern violin making, uh, like probably not anybody else. Uh, uh, and uh, he helped uh, a lot, uh, not only me, I mean, uh, he was, uh, he made the last CD dedicated to the modern making. Mm -hmm. He could, uh, of course, play Guarneri, he had the Huberman Guarneri, he could play, he had the Storioni, he had many old instruments. So he was not uh, really uh, interested only because he was need in the need of a violin, but because he's, he was feeling that uh, the modern making should be uh, encouraged in a way. And he did it. Uh -huh. 
he did it. So I, I also him, and of course uh, all the others. Uh, I am. Anne Sophie Mutter. Yeah, was among them. very grateful to Anne Sophie Mutter because also, also because I, I, I didn't expect that she was interested in one of my violins, but what she told me encouraged me very much. Wow! Yeah, Congratulations! Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my last question. So, what, uh, what do you think about the Polish luthier school? Yeah. Uh, in Italy, we are not so acquainted. Uh, I mean, uh, a few of our colleagues uh, probably in the past uh, had to do with the Polish Association. But I, for speaking about myself, uh, I would like to know more about the history. I discovered today, for example, in these days, for example, that there are is, is a, a big uh, uh, association and uh, has a lot of history. And uh, so I hope in the future to have... Uh, the possibility maybe to know more of uh, my colleagues. So this is a uh, work we have done with the European Association for a while when it was possible to make uh, uh, meetings uh, in every pa different part of Europe, uh, but we didn't, we never came to Poland at that time. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Very welcome. Yes, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, to, my pleasure. To talk to you. Thank, thank you. you.